The Amazonas, Siberia, and other parts of the world are on fire. And the climate summit in New York is coming up. What can we expect from the, from the climate summit? What output is realistic? And also we have the global climate strikes coming up from September 20th until today, September 27th. What are the hopes uh, for these strikes? What can, it, can they achieve? Um, welcome to the show, Vanessa Nataki. You are one of the global uh, strikers, not so many already, but a few in Uganda. Please uh, welcome to the show, Vanessa Nataki. From Berlin, we have Nick Natal, who is Director of Strategic Communications at Earth Day Network. Welcome, Nick. And with us from New York, we have Jill Cubitt, who is co-founder of Our Kids Climate. And with me here in the studio, I have Ingmar Rensog, CEO and founder of We Don't Have Time. So, Ingmar, please share with us uh, the social media news. What has been around social media lately is uh, a lot of um, fake news. That's the thing. Uh, it's a lot of disinformation and uh, propaganda about the climate issue out on the internet. And this is going worse and worse. Uh, and uh, uh, we have to figure out where all this came from. And I think it came from the interest that don't like the environment movement, what that is challenged the, the power of society. And one example is uh, the Bolsonaro government. There's a leak report that tells that they have a strategy to blame the NGOs for the forest fires in Amazon and also see them as an uh, enemy. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, regarding the, this, this uh, fake news and the propaganda on the internet, it's more sophisticated than you could actually think with a first look. This is just an example of uh, a helicopter uh, that is seems to starting fire. Mm. And uh, it has had over 3.5 million oh, viewers. Uh, but the thing is, those fires uh, is not in Amazonas. So this is somewhere else in the world. Uh, and if you Google this phenomenon, it's also actually a way to put out fires uh, to actually control it. Uh, but on the internet, this is stated as Bolsonaro is turning, putting fires in Amazon. Uh, so it's totally fake. And uh, of course, this is bad for the environment movement because if they are spreading one fake video, the whole climate crisis. It's undermining the, the serious, yes. Yes. And I don't think this is a coincidence. I don't think this is a mistake. Because if you look deeper into this issue, uh, I have another example, uh, and this is really serious stuff. It's someone that is pretending to be the non-violence organization Extinction Rebellion, official account. Mm. Uh, and they are every day putting out images of uh, people that is uh, using violence in their name, etc. Mm. And they're doing this on many platforms, Instagram, Twitter, etc., etc. Uh, and it's quite hard to see what is going on if you only see a chair on the internet, etc. So this is someone putting a lot of time and resources to, to do. Actually. And why? What's your explanation? Uh, I think the fossil interest is getting desperate mm. because the environment movement is gaining ground. Uh, and the independent newspaper in, in the UK, uh, they, have, uh, they have discovered a leaked document where there's also going to be a big PR campaign against the environment movement, against the legislation, net zero, etc. So they're calling this out before it happens. And I think that is very good because if people know that it's going to be a big PR campaign against the climate, people will not, I mean, people won't care about it. Uh, so I think it's really good to call it out. The reason why the fossil interest don't like the development in the world right now. Uh, it spells out money, I think. And it's not the way you think. It's not about they are scared of that no one will want to buy oil and fossil fuels, etc. That's not the thing. The thing is subsidies. Mm -hmm. According to, to the IMF, uh, there's 
thumps to this. Monetary yes, mm. it thumps to this. So the fossil industry of 5.2 trillion dollars. That's six percent of the global GDP. Six percent of the wow, that's a lot of money. That is goes directly into this business, and of course they're doing everything they can to keep this money because if they don't have the money, we will not have an oil society anymore. That's history. That don't make them succeed. That make this history. I will also say, in comparable subsidies to renewable, is only like 150 billion. That's the big difference. That's the big difference. So we need to keep calling it out and, and make sure that the fake news are revealed. Yes, we need to call this method out and we need to know their motives and it sells money, 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 money. And actually they try to frame the environmental movement, but hey, everyone works with the environmental movement but knows that mm. we're lack of money. The money is the problem, not, not the power. We don't have the money. For sure. And let's, let's ask Nick and Jill and Vanessa, do you have any comments on this fake news? Um, uh, Nick, please. Yeah, I mean, you know, Obviously, fake news has been around since the dawn of time, but uh, it's absolutely clear that, that the very nature of the internet as we know it uh, conspires to help this fake news because, you know, just, you know, you know, with the algorithms on Google and things like that, you know, that if people see certain bits of fake news and download it, they're more likely to see the same rubbish again. And it kind of reinforces their worldview. And I think that is a very you know, challenging part of the world in which we live, that, that so much of the information out there is being siphoned off in different directions to cater to what some of the big search engines think is what they're interested in. So they don't really see the alternative views. And I think this is a, a very worrisome development, not just for climate, but for all mm. kinds of big social and environmental issues that we care about. Absolutely. Uh, Jill? activism that's taking place these days is on social media. Um, and so I would just add that, you know, because the because many photos have been out there on the fires that are from other countries or other fires, it's for people to really be conscious of what they're reposting and what they're choosing to share. Thank you. Um, and I think on it's on a some of it is on us as environmental activists and as leaders of organizations to really make sure that we're not contributing to the problem. Thank you. Vanessa, let's, uh, let's hear what, you, what, what news you, you bring to us. Um, about the fake news, there's a lot of news that keeps being shared in social media. Most of the news is altered as it travels to different kinds of people. By the time it reaches probably the 10th person, it has been completely altered. Mm. So we have to do our best to make sure that the audience and the public receive news directly that is true and that has facts not altered news because that article uh, please can you comment a little bit more about it what is the article about yeah uh, it's about uh, the temperatures in east africa and how they're going to affect agriculture in the various places it goes on to say that uganda is expected to continue having unpredictable rain and dry seasons because scientists have concluded after projecting an increase in temperatures of about two degrees Celsius over the next 30 years in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. And, and these climate changes, mm. yeah, and these climate changes are going to have an impact on the agriculture sector because it is mainly the most important thing, most important sector in all the East African countries, and they depend on rain-fed agriculture. So because of all these changes, we are expected to face a challenge when it comes to agricultural production and productivity. Thank you, Vanessa. Uh, Nick, I'd like to move directly over to you. Uh, what news are you bringing forward? Yeah, well, I mean, this is a really big month uh, for climate change and hopefully a very big month for uh, uh, climate action. As we know, on the 23rd of September, I think the news here is the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, hosting heads of state, prime ministers and presidents from around the world, and has requested quite, quite specifically that he wants them to come with stepped up ambition in terms of their, their national climate action plans that they all put down for the Paris Agreement of 2015. 
And you can see some movement happening before the summit. Uh, I mean, Prime Minister Modi of India, for example, was just recently in uh, Paris. He actually announced that, that India would actually achieve its Paris targets, uh, not in 2030, but in a year and a half's time. So mainly because they've had this enormous drive with solar power. Uh, a Chinese government official was quoted as saying that China will peak its emissions, its maximum emissions, in about 2022, which again is about eight years before their original target under Paris of 2030. And of course, Finland and Scandinavia uh, recently announced that it was going to be carbon neutral in 2035, so advance its long-term target about what it wants to do. So I think we have to keep, keep all eyes on the summit on the 23rd. When more countries come forward saying, yes, we're ready to up our ambition, uh, because this is the window that was foreseen in Paris opening about this time when everyone had to ratchet up uh, their national climate plan. So I think some will announce that uh, on the 23rd. Some may signal they will announce it at the UN Climate Conference later in the year in Chile, and perhaps some by the UN Climate Conference next year uh, in 2020, likely to be hosted by the government of the United Kingdom. So I think we're seeing from business, from uh, investors uh, at the Global Climate Action Summit last year in California, that the levers of the real economy are ready to step up uh, with more ambition. And that was a signal to New York uh, this year. And I hope the heads of state realize that the full economy is really behind the decarbonization of the global economy and will, as leaders, step up their national climate action plan. So let's see on the 23rd of September what happens. Thank you very much, Nick Nato. Uh, any comments from, uh, from the rest of you, from you, Ingmar, for instance? Uh, I agree. There's a lot of things happening within the business community. Uh, and uh, what I see is that many companies are as frustrated as we private individuals. So companies are more and more getting active and actually, I will say, it's something new here. It's, business activism uh, and it's not green it's a great, great it, word, it's actually it? it's actually i mean real people working with high level management in businesses they want to do change uh, and uh, I, I think that if we could i mean we need to take care of that uh, movement mm -hmm. to make action and i think the climate meeting in new york and chile could, could have, hopefully be a big uh, player there. It's sounding very promising. Jill Cubitt from New York, our Kids Climate co-founder. What news, what would you like to, to highlight for us? Yeah, so today I'm sharing an article um, that's entitled How Greta Thunberg Captured the World's Attention on Climate. Um, and the author really is asking this question of what specifically is it about Greta that appeals to people? Is it the timing or is there something else about her? Um, and I found it to just to be like a really interesting analysis of some of the things that are specific to Greta, but I think there's lessons that can be learned from for the general public in terms of how we think about our own climate action. Um, and so one of the ideas that the author focuses on is that one thing that Greta does is she really aligns her beliefs with her actions. And so those actions are both, you know, not eating meat and fly, not flying, but they're also about getting out and protesting through her, through her strikes. And so I think for the general public and for people out there who really care about this issue, you know, we can kind of, we can learn that we also need to align our beliefs and actions. Um, and one way that we can do this in the really near future, which is starting next week, is to get out there and join the global climate strikes. Um, and I'm hoping we can talk a bit more about the strikes and, and provide information for people about what they can do. I know our kids' climate is, is now active in 19 countries. So there will be lots of parents uh, in, your, in your coalition uh, on the streets and, and on the squares, right, Jill? Yeah, I think there's, a, at this point, they're looking at having over a, almost a thousand actions um, globally for all different kinds of organizations, not just ours. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is, um, I believe, the most recent estimates where there's 117 countries involved. Um, and so they're really looking for this whole week from the 20th to the 27th to be the largest action, collective action on climate. Nick, please, uh, what would you like to add? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I think this also dovetails a little bit with what Ingmar did at the beginning with fake news, because I think we've all watched uh, this young 16-year-old girl 
you know, explode onto the stage with her honesty and, and her, her, her determination to make a difference. I mean, she came out of nowhere. But the fake news now is conspiracy theory. You know, there are big people behind her. There's lots of money behind her, you know. And, and I think that this is, again, a part of the phenomenon that in the time in which we live, we cannot imagine that an ordinary, sick, well, not ordinary, extraordinary, 16-year-old girl from Sweden could, by her actions of sitting outside the Swedish parliament, create a whole new dynamism in this area of climate change. We find it hard to believe, but it is a story of, 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 of this, and we really need to nip in the bud this, this, this fake you know, conspiracy theory around where she's come from. Thank you, Nick. What would you like to add, Ingmar? Yeah, I have, I have my experience with that conspiracy, but we have no time to go into that. I will actually mention that our estimate is 4,000 manifestations. Mm -hmm. So it's higher than yours. So I think it's going to be big, big, big. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it's important to know that this is not just one week. We need to keep the pressure up. And it's a little dangerous to make it two, because it could be a vacuum afterwards. So we need really to do that great stuff. Don't forget it the next week. We need to keep on. Staying in for the long run. Vanessa, what's happening in the Uganda from the climate perspective uh, strike? Um, in Uganda, we have more strikers now, uh, like Hilda and Lea, that are taking on the climate strikes. And we are planning for the 20th uh, September strike. Uh, personally, I'm working with some other youth that are willing to strike, though they will have most of their first strikes this Friday. They've been inspired by what the other youth are doing, so they're joining in on the strikes. So we will have most of them strike this Friday. And also Fridays for Future Uganda, we have other strikers there that are doing amazing work and all is in plan for 20th September for the global strike. Actually, one of them will be in New York, so she'll be striking with the rest of the teenagers, the rest of the youth out there. Yes, the, the, the global strike is really growing in Uganda. Wonderful. Anything anybody would like to add to comment? Uh, did you all, could you show us a little bit about the news on the, on the screen here? We have the article that's the Slate magazine. Yeah. Rita, yes. And no, it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating how the analysis, Jill, really sort of cuts to the, the core of this argument. Nick, would you like to? Well, I just want to agree with, with what you were saying earlier. I mean, it can't just begin and end with, with what's happening in the September. I mean, we need to look forward. We need to look forward to the crucial year of 2020. And I just want to make a little plug that the Earth Day event next year in April in 2020 will be very, very focused on youth. So watch this space. Well, all hands on deck, right? Exactly. Keep, keep, keep at it. Well, thank Absolutely. you very much, Nick Nadol from Berlin, and Jill Kubit from New York, and Vanessa from with us from Uganda, Vanessa Nakate. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for sharing. And good luck with the strike, Vanessa, in, in, uh, in Uganda. Thank you. Thank you.